In this video, I want to show you a book that I purchased several years ago. This is a really old book. It's called Advanced Engineering Mathematics, and it is by Wiley. And you can see how worn it is. I mean, super, super old. So the person who owned this book before me was a nuclear physicist, and I'm pretty sure he was famous. And we're gonna talk about who he was in this video. Also, this book came with like some hidden treasures inside. So let me show you some of the really cool things that came with this book. And these are things that belong to the person who used to own this book. So we've got like, I think homework and exams and some other really cool things. All right, let's go ahead and open up this book and take a look inside. So this is the inside cover and you see here it says Library of Augustus Prince. So I have several of his books and they all have the stamp inside them. And this is the first book that I have ever reviewed that belongs to Augustus Prince. I have not reviewed any of the books that I picked up from his personal collection. So he passed away several years ago and I was lucky enough to get some of the books from his personal collection. I collect math books, so this was like, wow. So who is Augustus Prince? So Augustus Prince was a famous nuclear physicist and he served in the US Navy and he was actually the first black radar man. That's what it says on the internet. He was the first black radar man in the US Navy. But he had a PhD and he worked for a government lab as a nuclear physicist. And this is one of his books and all of these papers came with the book, including some really interesting stuff, which I'll show you a little bit later. Advanced Engineering Mathematics by C.R. Wiley Jr. Professor and Chairman, Department of Mathematics, University of Utah. McGraw-Hill Book Company, Inc. 1951, super old. Looks like Wiley dedicated this book to his father. I always think it's cool to read the dedications, especially in books like this that take so much work and effort to write. I mean, look how thick this is. This is the preface and I've read all of it and various portions of the book but there's one point I want to make here. It says here, in the firm conviction that a good textbook is one that can be read by a student with the minimum of assistance from his instructor and can later be used as a reference with little or no need for outside help, the author has tried to write an easy book. So the goal of this author is to write a book that is easy to write a book that students can understand, which I think should be the goal of every book. This is the table of contents. And let me just say that if you know calculus, you can pick up this book and you can read it because it has a really big emphasis on differential equations. Also, if you know differential equations, you can pick up this book and refresh your knowledge and you will definitely learn some extra things. So chapter one is on ordinary differential equations of the first order. Two is on linear equations with constant coefficients. Again, standard topics here. Three is on simultaneous linear DEs. Four is on mechanical and electrical circuits. Five is on Fourier series and integrals. And six is on the Laplace transform. And I'm going a little bit quickly here because I wanna to get to the really interesting stuff. Seven is on partial differential equations. People always ask me, how do you learn PDEs? Well, this is a really good place to start. Wiley does a great job explaining the theory behind partial differential equations and how to solve them. Eight is on Bessel functions. Nine is on analytic functions of a complex variable. This would serve as an excellent intro to complex variables. So if you ever plan to take complex variables in college, this would be a great thing to read to help prepare you. 10 is on integration in the complex plane. Again, this is something that's covered typically in a complex variables course. Same thing with 11 which is infinite series in the complex plane. 12 is also covered in the complex variables course, as is 13. So really, if you want to learn complex variables, you're gonna get a lot out of this book. If you want to learn PDEs, you're gonna get a lot out of this book. If you want to learn differential equations, you're gonna get a ton out of this book. Here it talks about analytic functions and fluid mechanics, vector analysis, and then numerical analysis. All right, let's dive deeper into this book. Here are some of the exercises for the first section and they're very simple. Like these are really easy problems. If you know some calculus and you read this section, you should be able to do these. If you know differential equations, you should be able to do these. So 
The book is written in a great way. You can read it, understand it, and do the problems. Having said that, it is not a perfect book. It does not have answers in the back of the book. However, some of the sections do have answers right next to the problems. In this particular case, looks like Augustus wrote some stuff here in the book, <laughs> which is great. And you see that writing throughout the entire book. Here you see that some of the exercises do have answers and they're included here. Now, I don't know if the newer editions of this book have the answers in the back of the book or whether or not they have like a solutions manual available. I will leave a link in the description so you can check the contents of whatever edition I end up finding. I don't know uh, what editions of this book are available. This is the chapter where analytic functions of a complex variable are discussed and Wiley does a very good job. Again, if you plan to take a course on complex variables or you want to know a little bit about complex variables, this book serves as an excellent introduction and it's written in a very clean way. Um, I feel like the author just does a fantastic job. Also, the exercises are really appropriate. And again, here you can see there are some answers to the exercises. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the stuff that came with this book, which is actually super interesting, I think. So these are papers that I found inside the book. And again, this came from the personal collection of Augustus Prince. So this appears to be some type of exam. It says Math 503, Augustus Prince, May 1955. And that says 100 in exam. This guy was no joke. 93 in course. And these problems, they seem to be fairly simple or rather standard. So like if you knew some differential equations, you could solve these problems. So not much has changed uh, since 1955, it seems. So yeah, problems that you could actually do if you read this book or if you knew some DE. Pretty cool. Let's look at this piece of paper here. This looks like it has some really interesting typesetting. I know it has a name, but I forgot. This is a certain type of typesetting that they used to use back in the day. And I think these are practice problems. Yeah, Math 505 sample questions, whereas over here, it was Math 503. So it looks like this book was used for two courses, Math 503 and Math 505. Define what is meant by the continuity of f of z at z equals z naught. Pretty easy. Define what is meant by f of z being analytic at z equals z naught. Cool, right? All kinds of practice questions. They smell so good. Really awesome. Let's look at this piece of paper here. This looks like some just work that he did. It's kind of cool. He did it in pen. Very uh, engineering-like. I always have this mental image of engineers using fancy pens to do advanced mathematics. I don't know why I have that that thing in my mind about engineers, but here's living proof that Augustus Prince in the 50s was using a pen to do some really cool mathematics. Here's another apparent test paper from Math 503. So this one was in June 1955, and the previous one was in May 1955. So interesting, really cool. And I think there might be some stuff on the back of this one. Yeah, there's some writing here. It's like there's some work on the back page here. This next piece of paper here just has a bunch of work and I'm not sure if it's homework. I kind of feel like it might be. Yeah, look at the writing. Wow, and it's all in pen. Really fancy cursive. Just got to smell it really quick. Yeah, smells really, really good. My only regret is not getting more books from this collection. It's a long story, but basically I didn't have any money on me at the time and I wasn't able to get all the books. So this is the interesting part. Answers to exercises in advanced engineering mathematics. Augustus Prince, really cool. So here you can see it has answers to almost all of the problems. For example, here it's missing number 29 in the first section. Here it's missing one, two, and three, and six and seven, and I don't know if there's anything after 10, but I don't know if you can find this on the internet or if you can buy this. Maybe there is um, a solutions manual available for the book online. I don't know. I will look and if I can find anything, I'll leave links in the description. But this is super cool because I have this book and then I also have these solutions and it's cool. He's got like a stamp, right? Augustus Prince and he uses his initials, AP. Really cool. I really think like this stuff is amazing. Like it's amazing to have these old papers 
from the past with solutions by Augustus Prince. And, you know, what really impresses me about this is that I review a lot of old books, okay? I have a huge collection of old math books. And what makes this one different? Well, one, it's Augustus Prince. And when I Googled his name, he was the first black radar man in the Navy. And he was a nuclear scientist. So that makes it really cool. But another thing that is really amazing is that in most books like this that are used, you see some writings, you know, you see some stuff at the beginning of the book, but here's some here, right? But when you go further in this book, even to the latter chapters, you still see writing in the book. Like I saw writing, look, look, there's writing here. This is 9.7. So you see that Augustus didn't just like, you know, read the beginning of the book. No, 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 no. He had to cover every chapter that was covered in his courses. And perhaps that's something to say about courses, right? I always talk about self-study, but the benefit of a course is it gets you to go further into the book, further than you might go on your own. So uh, Augustus went deep into this book and learned a lot of mathematics in two full courses. I think it's pretty cool. People are always asking me, what's a good way to learn partial differential equations? And I think that this book provides an excellent introduction Chapter seven is on partial differential equations, and it is very, very readable. While he does a fantastic job, as I mentioned earlier in the preface, his goal is to make it so that students can actually learn. So he intentionally tries to write an easy book, which is not always the case. I have a book by Goldman where he specifically states in the preface that he's not going to include any illustrations because the students should create them on their own. I don't believe in that philosophy. I think that Wiley has it right. You know, math is hard enough. Why try to make it harder? So he tries to make it easier and I think he does a really good job. Here are some of the exercises in the section on the theory of residues. So if you've had a class on complex variables, you're familiar with this. And I do like that he includes some answers here. So pretty cool. You see how you have the answers right next to some of the problems. But that's it, again, in this edition, which is from 1951, if you look in the back of the book, I could not find any answers. I don't know how the newer editions are structured. I don't know if they have answers in the back or if there's a separate solutions manual that you can purchase. Chapter 11 is a really fun chapter. It's infinite series in the complex plane. I love infinite series and I think that he does a fantastic job here just kind of going through the material at a very brief, but also a very clear pace. Yeah, you can see here he talks about the region of convergence, divergence, you know, what it means to be absolutely convergent, what it means to be conditionally convergent. Here's a random portion of the book where there are some notes written and I've looked at them and they actually make sense. So I feel like Augustus has done a good job, you know, filling in the understanding or rather understanding what's happening. So you see here we have the modulus of f of w and he's saying it's less than or equal to m. So here we have a less than, here we have the m. We have the modulus of z minus a less than r1. So here we have the modulus of z minus a to the nth power, right? And then here it's r1 to the nth power. Here you have a greater than or equal to symbol, but typically what you do here is you divide by both sides. So we divide by the modulus, divide by r2. So we have that one over the modulus is less than or equal to uh, one over r2. And you see here it is here, and then here it is to the nth power. So it totally makes sense. Same thing here, divide both sides by the modulus, divide by r2 minus r1, I'm going quickly, but basically you would get an inequality where one over the modulus is less than one over r2 minus r1. And that's what happens here with these two pieces. So one of the things that I really love about the book is the way it smells. It smells, oh, it smells so good. It just smells so old and just, Wow, it's like a treasure trove of knowledge and it just smells amazing. Uh, perhaps it's because I used to collect comic books, but I love old books and the way they smell. Just the amount of years that this has been in existence and the amount of knowledge that it has given to people is just amazing. Ah, yeah, amazing book. Overall, I think this is a really good book. It's very easy to read compared to a lot of other math books and I love the way it smells. And I'm super happy that my copy belonged to Augustus Prince. Again, according to the internet, he was the first black radar man in the US Navy. That's what it says when you search for his name, it comes up on some government website. And he was also a nuclear physicist 
who worked at a national laboratory. Um, I have more books by Augustus, and I have more uh, things that belong to him, mathematical and physics things, and hopefully I'll make more videos on it. But this book itself is great, and I think it's fantastic. The big question is though, you know, does the newer edition include the solutions? Because again, this one came with these old test papers and like homework papers and notes. And it also came with this wonderful little thing here that has the solutions. This makes it so much easier to learn. So I'll try to leave some links in the description. I'll look for it. I'm sure there's a newer edition of this book out. I just have not looked. Um, and just a warning about this book. Um, it's very easy to get sucked into it. So uh, <laughs> it's just, it, you can spend a lot of time on it because it's so interesting. I feel like the exercises are at the right level. I feel like the explanations are really clear. I'm not saying it's a perfect book. There are some sections that I found were a little bit confusing, but it's really good. It's really good. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you've learned some stuff. Great book. And yeah, Advanced Engineering Mathematics by Wiley. Good luck and take care.